Hi, I'm Julie Parsons. I'm the Careers Advisor at Candos High School. The purpose of this presentation is to give information to students and their parents around Year 10 subject selection for Years 11 and 12 or Stage 6. All the information that is in this presentation has been prepared by NESA, that is the New South Wales Education Standards Authority. None of the information that is in here has been reinterpreted by the school. These are the rules supplied by NESA regarding the HSC for all students in New South Wales that are undertaking it. Now I'd like to point out something that I do with all my students when we're going through this presentation. When you're choosing your subjects, you should really be choosing things that you are capable of doing, also subjects that you're interested in, any career aspirations that you have and any subjects that may help you with that, perhaps getting into courses at TAFE or university. Also check on the syllabus requirements for various subjects you might choose, such as practical work or any major um, performances that are involved. Some students choose more than one of these subjects and it can become quite tricky to manage completing all of that work on top of uh, your classwork. Some subject combinations also preclude you being able to do them together. So again, that is something you need to check on. You also need to look at what other commitments you have outside of school to balance all of that. The high school certificate is the culmination of a student's school career. It does come after approximately 13 years of schooling and it is the highest educational award that can be achieved at secondary school in New South Wales. It is internationally and nationally recognised as being a quality qualification. It reports on students' achievement in terms of the standards that they've achieved in individual courses and it gives a profile of their achievement across a broad range of subjects. It is a very worthwhile qualification to have. All HSC courses have a unit value. To fulfil the requirements of the HSC, students in Year 11 must study a minimum of 12 units, which in our school is typically six two-unit subjects. Students need to satisfactorily complete each of those subjects before they can commence the HSC courses in those subjects in their HSC year. In Year 12, students need to undertake a minimum of 10 units, so there is the ability to drop a subject if they wish, although some students actually pick up additional units if they're doing extension courses. So there are some rules around what subjects you can do and the pattern that you study for your HSC. As you can see from this slide, English is the only compulsory subject. So students have to do an English course of some Type. We have Advanced English, Standard English and English Studies and students will need to find the course that is at the level or um, is, at, is the type of course that they need will best suit them. They also need to have at least six units of board developed courses, three courses of two unit value or greater and four different subjects including English. Now that might seem complicated but it's pretty straightforward and students will consult with myself as the careers advisor after they've made their initial um, selections so that we can check their entries. There's only a maximum of six units of science that can be included in the year 11 pattern of study. So that would typically in our school be something like perhaps biology, physics, chemistry, if that was what was offered. They may do a maximum of seven units of science in year 12 because that is when they can pick up the extension in science, the one unit. 
So a new requirement for the HSC is the minimum standards in literacy and numeracy. Students sit tests in year 10 to check that they've met the minimum standard in literacy and numeracy to be eligible for the HSC. If they don't pass those online tests, they get two chances per year after that in which they can make good and meet the requirements for the HSC. So students that are in year 12 sitting for their HSC may still have to meet that requirement, but they do have opportunities to do so. So that is a new requirement since 2020. So this slide just details a little bit more specifically what's required in those literacy and numeracy tests. You can see there's a reading test, a numeracy test and a writing test. They're done online and students have to answer multiple choice questions and for the writing test they need to answer one question out of choice of two prompts. You can go to the NESA website and you can get a bit more information on that if you wish to. So this slide just outlines the differences between the board developed courses and the board endorsed courses. Board developed courses have HSC exams that are compulsory except for English Studies, Mathematics Standard 1 and the VET Curriculum Framework courses have optional HSC exams. Life Skill courses are also board developed and they do not have HSC exams. Board developed courses may be included in the calculation of the ATAR or the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank. Some of the vocational courses fit into this category of being a board developed course and life skills courses are all board developed. Board endorsed courses, on the other hand, they have no HSC examination. It's based purely on the school based assessment. They're not included in the calculation of the ATAR and some vocational courses can be in there as well. So a little bit more information on board developed courses and the ATAR. Category A courses may be included in the calculation of a student's Australian Tertiary Admission rank. They have the compulsory HSC examination for most courses. Category B courses, no more than two units or typically one subject of a Category B course can be included in the calculation of an ATAR. They are typically the optional HSC exams for English Studies, Math Standard 1 and the VET Framework courses. In regards to the satisfactory completion of a course, there are three elements that students need to make sure that they have done in order to meet those requirements. First of all, they need to follow the course that's developed or endorsed by NESA. Now, the easiest way to do this is simply to turn up to school and attend regularly and make sure they're going to class and following the, the work that the teacher is providing with them to them. They need to also apply themselves with diligence and sustained effort to not just the coursework or the assessment tasks, but also to any experiences that are provided in the course by the school. So for example, field work or excursions, experiments, things like that. They need to make sure that they're working as best as they can all the time and continuing to keep working at things. And they also need to achieve some or all of the course outcomes, which as you would expect, should follow after they've completed the first two points mentioned. Also in regards to VET courses they need to make sure that they complete their mandatory work places which equates to 70 hours over the two years. Uh, in addition to that students need to make sure that they're completing HSC assessment tasks that contribute in excess of 50% of the available marks in a, per, in a course um, and they need to make sure that they're submitting assessment tasks on time in order to make sure that they're achieving those marks. They also need to sit and make a serious attempt at any requisite 
exams, HSC external exams that they have to do. They simply can't do the course and then not show up for the exams. If they fail to sit their exams, they will fail to receive their HSC. It's also the student's responsibility to check their confirmation of entry each year in years 10, 11 and 12 and we usually do this once a term. So the students are checking that they're enrolled in the correct courses um, and that the comments that are written at the bottom say that they're eligible for whatever qualification that they're going for. So in year 10 it's the record of school achievement or the ROSA. Year 11 it's the stage 6 preliminary also comes under the ROSA and in year 12 it's the HSC. They need to check their personal details, they need to check all of that information to make sure that it is correct. It is actually their responsibility to make sure that they are entered in what they are actually undertaking. Another program that students are required to satisfactorily complete before they can be entered into NESA for the HSC is HSC or my own work. Now this is a mandatory program that educates students on the principles and practices of good scholarship. There are five modules and students will undertake some teaching on those modules and then they have to pass a test on each one. So they have to achieve a mark of 80% or greater in order to demonstrate that they understand what's involved and that they're aware of those areas. So that scholarship principles and practices acknowledging sources, plagiarism, copyright and working with others. Now the following set of slides is going to give information specific to a number of courses within the curriculum provided for stage 6 in New South Wales. In regards to English in Year 11, there are three courses that we offer at our school, English Advanced, English Standard and English Studies. There's also Extension 1 English which must be studied in conjunction with Advanced English. If you have any questions regarding specific English courses then I would advise you to talk to Rod San Martin who is the Head Teacher of English at Candos High School. For Year 12 in English, the same courses apply as did in Year 11 with the addition of Extension 2 English. To undertake Extension 2 English you must first be studying Extension 1 English along with Advanced English. In regards to Mathematics in Year 11, there is the Mathematics Advanced course with the option of Mathematics Extension 1 and also Mathematics Standard. Again, if you have any specific questions about the various mathematics courses, I would advise you to talk to the head teacher, Mathematics. For Mathematics in Year 12, the same courses apply with the following changes. Extension 2 Mathematics is available if you are already doing Extension 1 and Advanced Maths. If you are doing the standard course, it splits into two separate courses Standard 1 and Standard 2. Standard 2 has a mandatory exam, Standard 1 has an optional HSC exam. Again, if you have any questions about mathematics, I suggest that you speak to the head teacher mathematics. Languages are available at our school only through distance education as we have no trained uh, LOAT teachers at our school. Students who have not done any language courses in the past, say in Stage 5, may undertake a beginner's course. If students have come to us from somewhere else and they have done uh, elective languages in years 9 and 10, they may nominate to do a continuous course in that language. The other information regarding language uh, is there. But in our school, because we don't have trained teachers in those areas, it's very rare for students to actually be studying languages with us.
when students get into year 12, there are uh, other extension courses that they can do. For example, there is a history extension. Students can do ancient history or modern history as their two unit subjects. The extension, however, is just a general history extension. There's music extension available also. There is a science extension available and also for some languages and VET courses. If students wish to do that, then they may. Life skills courses are available for those students who have special education needs. All life skill courses have a board developed course status. They contribute to the awards, the attainment of the HSC, but they do not have HSC examinations and they don't contribute to the calculation of an ATAR. Some students may do a um, combination of some life skill courses and some what we would term mainstream courses as part of the pattern of study for the HSC. Candos High School can also offer vocational education and training courses or VET courses and they form, fall into two categories. We have board developed VET courses, so they are the stage six industry curriculum frameworks such as hospitality, such as primary industries. There are also board endorsed VET courses that are available at our school and chiefly that would be furniture making pathways which we offer. Some of the courses that students do at TAFE also fall into both of those different categories. So for example, the students who do auto at TAFE, they have an optional HSC exam. Students that are doing animal attending don't have an uh, optional HSC exam, so they fall into the board endorsed VET courses. So the courses may be available to all students or there may be students that are school-based trainees or school-based apprenticeship apprentices, sorry, who have to do those as well. So just in regards to industry curriculum frameworks, they are board developed HSC courses and they have a syllabus that's been developed. They are based on nationally endorsed training packages which lists which qualifications and units of competency have been included in the HSC syllabus and they describe how the units of competencies are arranged in the HSC VET courses. They include HSC outcomes and content. They do have an optional HSC exam which then provides access to an ATAR if students wish that and they also include a mandatory work placement of approximately 35 hours in over the two years. So these are board developed VET courses that students in our school have, un have undertaken in the past or are currently undertaking. These are all the ones that are available. We currently have students doing automotive. We have students currently doing construction, students currently doing electrotechnology, hospitality, and those are not all done at school. Some of those are delivered through TVET or TAFE, uh, which is in addition to the courses that students undertake at school. So this slide just demonstrates what the uh, VET credentials look like when students are issued with their transcripts. So in regards to their HSC credentials or their credentials that students receive from NESA, there are various ways that these are sent. Students are able to get an electronic copy called an e-record at each stage, year 10, year 11, year 12. Year 10 and 11 students qualify for a ROSA, which is a record of school achievement, and year 12 students will qualify for their HSC once they've completed everything satisfactorily. Students can go online and request those uh, qualifications are made available to them after completion at each stage so that they can put them in things like their resumes, portfolios, take them for job applications and so on.
The following slides just show what the uh, HSC test and more and the results packages look like that students are issued with once they complete their HSC. So how is the HSC mark determined? Well, for most subjects, if you're doing uh, board developed courses, the internal assessment or the assessment tasks that students do at school could contribute 50% of the HSC mark and the external examination that they sit contribute the other 50%. They're moderated by uh, MESA and then the resulting mark is the HSC reported mark that students will see on their results. Now in regards of the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank, the first thing to point out about this is that it is not a mark, it is actually a rank. It, it is comparing how the students have gone in relation to the rest of the cohort who have set the HSC for that year. So it is not a mark out of 100. If a student were to receive an ATAR of 68, it means that they have done better than 68% of the um, candidature that set the HSC. So it is important for a student that wishes to gain a place at university. It's also important that keep in your mind it is a rank, not a mark. And it just provides information on how a student performs overall in relation to the rest of the students in the state who have undertaken the HSC. So other considerations when you're deciding what you want to do for your HSC. What do you want for your future? Do you see yourself going straight to university, going into a trade, looking for employment, travelling? What is it that you would like to do? What pathway best suits you? Do you need more life experience? Would you like some time to work and put a bit more money beside you, behind you? There's lots of things for you to think about. You can ad ask advice from your teachers, from your parents, from your year advisor and from your careers advisor. So again, my name is Julie Parsons. I am the careers advisor at Candos High School. If you have any questions, anything you would like to discuss about subject selection or careers or pathways, anything in fact to do with any of the stuff I've presented or just other questions you have in regards to curriculum, you feel free to discuss those with me. I can be contacted at the school on 0263 794 103 and just make an appointment and we can have a chat about it. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you found this useful.